Imagine you're orbiting planet Earth, and you have this unique opportunity to watch its entire history in a short 75 minutes movie. You would probably get pretty bored, at least until eight minutes before the end. Then, all of a sudden, the planet goes green. But it's only in the last second that things start changing drastically. You will see species being depleted. Natural resources, oh sorry, species being extinguished. Natural resources being depleted. And a changing climate. At the same time, you also see urbanization expanding, populations migrating, and landscapes of race raising in land and sea. What would you think about this movie and its tragic ending? Let me take a wild guess. Thank God this is just a movie. Why did no hero show up to save the planet? Or why did I watch this movie in the first place? Well, I would think, what the hell are we doing to our planet? Now imagine, we could continue the sequel and give it a new beginning, a new history for our planet. What would be your script? My script would be about starting a revolution. The beginning of a new era where nature and people reconcile. People are often blamed about the destruction of nature. But nature can be quite destructive as well. Think about it. Dinosaurs got extinguished. Forests burned down. And about climate change. How are we ever going to beat the Ice Age? However, nature and people do not only destroy. Nature creates land, water, fauna and flora. While people we create landscapes, cities, ideas, and artifacts. Even waste. What is waste other than resources waiting for a new use? These are all resources. And we all know that natural resources are to be maximized especially the non-renewable. But what about the man-made resources? Shouldn't they be maximized as well? In my movie, cities would maximize all resources they have to reach resource efficiency. Do you want to know your role in my movie? You just have to wait. First, I'm going to take you through a journey. I started learning about resource efficiency as a child. I'm now getting into trouble with my own uh, sisters. This is us, me, my sisters, and my mother. And my mother raised us alone. And she taught us greatest lessons, great lessons. And one of them was that even if we, with few resources, everyone could prosper. We just had to maximize our resources. And we did. 
So without noticing, we learned and we grew up getting exp experience with the three famous R's on resource efficiency. So to reduce costs, we would just go and shop on all promotions available. We would chase half a city and go to 10 shops instead of one. I was the youngest child, so I would reuse nearly everything from my sisters, even the dresses I should not touch. I would also recycle a lot of waste, and I would make the most creative presents. But I cannot show you any of them, because my sisters would throw it away, so it would not last for a week. But this interest, my, my passion for resource efficiency, never left me. So it even grew stronger when I became a student in architecture. I would get very puzzled when I would hear professors telling me and giving me examples about uh, cities and landscapes and how to redevelop them, as if it would be a blank sheet of paper. I could not understand why insisting on the city as a blank sheet of paper? Why not see those rich resources there waiting to be used? Why not create solutions where you actually maximize and reuse all those, those resources instead? So one day, I found the missing piece of my puzzle, and it was in this code. Marta Delatore and Randall Mason, two heritage experts, they wrote, value has always been the reason underlying heritage conservation. It is self-evident that no society makes an effort to conserve what it does not value. So I started thinking, is that true? Do we really only keep what we value? Do we waste everything we don't? Is conservation restricted to heritage? So I had a lot of questions, and that's not normal for an architect. And I had very few answers. So I decided to not follow my fellow colleagues and to go and work with their blank sheets of paper. And instead, I decided to follow the footsteps of Marie Curie and then just try to be a hero in science. So I applied for a grant, and, uh, and I started a PhD program abroad. And in 2004, I moved from Portugal to the Netherlands. And I had this idea or this plan to design the most perfect design process a design process that would help architects, step by step, see those values and see those resources on cities while they are redeveloping it. So, I collected all best practices into this perfect model. All policies, all international recommendations, books, journal articles, everything. It was just, just perfect. I believed that architects would see beyond the blank sheets of paper. I believed they would even erase waste from their dictionary. But what I believe was wrong. Nothing changed. Just like computers giving errors. And you know what you need to do, right? Restart. Yeah, that's true. And that's what I did. I needed a new plan. But there were two key aspects that kept me thinking. First, I realized that the architect is not alone in the design process. Second, policies play a huge role in defining resources, uses, and values. So I was going to team up with those involved in drafting and implementing those policies but I needed stronger partners. I was not going to manage alone. So I contact Dr. Ron Veneurs. 
He was by then, by 2008, a specialist on World Heritage Cities at uh, UNESCO. And I sent him an email with my ideas and, um, and asking for feedback. And his reply, very, very critical, but also very positive, seeds our relationship ever since. For those who grew in the 80s, they know what I mean with this picture. Yeah. So Ron and I were like the master and the apprentice. So we involved more than 1,000 World Heritage Cities in this amazing project where they could learn and raise understanding for their resources, their users and their values, but also how they evolved over time. If, well, World Heritage Cities, let me tell you, they are very, very unique because they also have resources which matter to us all. To that value to mankind. So if Marta and Randy's theory was true, this could well be the world heritage cities, the cities which are most resource efficient in the world. So over the last five years, uh, we teamed up with more than 50 researchers and um, we which are mainly students and on voluntary basis and on temporary, temporary uh, projects. But we manage to gather about 70 partners all over the world, focusing on 20 case studies. But there was one particular city that changed our course of research forever. And that city was Lamu, very small there, you see? <laughs> This city has a very strong history with other two cities um, in, in Kenya, in Eastern Africa. All three cities are in, uh, in Kenya. And I'll tell you a little bit about their story now. So, Takwa, one of the cities, uh, it's an archaeological site today, but it was inhabited between the 15th and the 17th century, uh, 1700. Um, but they did have problems in shortage of uh, fresh water. So they ended up um, abandoning the city and moving across the bay, and they settled in Sheila and Lamu. But these two cities, they have a so very sophisticated well system of wells, which maintain them and, and allow them to, to survive until today. But over the years, there was a lot of illegal land occupation. So the, the same wells that saved them in Takwa were now taking them in, in danger um, in, uh, in Chila and Lamo. So they, the community was very committed, so created a, a Save Lamo initiative. And, and recently, they, they actually succeeded. They succeeded to protect their resources. And this all experience and how they share their knowledge with each other that brought us to this idea worth sharing, which I, why I'm here today. And this idea was that we would all become scientists and that we would use a global observatory online where we could share lessons about resource efficiency in different cities of the world. You might think, I'm not a science, I'm not a scientist, but you are. Let me prove it to you. We know already that you all have mobiles because we did that raise of hands today. But how many of you even post pictures, messages, and, and even comments about things happening in your city? Raise your hands. Okay. And how many of you actually use uh, instruments online to search for a destination or a location where you're going to visit? Raise your hands. Yeah, you see? Just like I learned about the free hours on resource efficiency, you just became scientists without noticing. But we just are not using all this information and this knowledge. We just heard 
other companies are, we are not using it yet for our own benefit, and that was our idea. But let me give you some examples. For example, Hamburg. I'm sure a few of you live in Hamburg, right? Yeah, I see some heads nodding. That's OK. Fine. So imagine you could use this platform to share what you value in your cities and, and why, and also you could comment about how it is changing and if you agree with it or not. And you could share also your lessons of resource efficiency. So with this platform, you could also learn that Hamburg is not the only port city in the world. There are many more. So you could find out common resources, common challenges, but you could also find out what exactly makes it unique, just like this elevators in Valparaiso that are on the World Heritage List. And this, this idea of sharing and, and growing together and learning from each other, it's something we didn't have before as strong without internet and, and media and, and the new technologies. So this was our dream for the protected urban planet. And you might think it is ambitious to cover the whole world, maybe. But impossible, it isn't. Not a chance. Because we have been working already for it, with it uh, since 2011, full speed. So first we started mapping all the locations worldwide, and even zooming in in certain case studies, as we did in island of Mozambique. Then we linked resources, like bridging museums into to urban heritage, and we enabled people to use their apps and to personalize their tours in the city. And more recently, we interacted, we create a, a, a platform where people could exchange what they value and not and give their values to it. But recently, we had to slow down. On April 28, Ron passed away. And I lost my mentor, I lost my teammate, I lost a friend. Though I'm not alone, because not only I have my team, but also the huge network we created over the last five years, they, they are there, they are very vivid, and they want to continue, they want to keep working on this project together. So, just as Jake Jacob says, an urban activist uh, half, a, half a century ago, cities have the capacity to providing something for everybody, only because and only when they are created by everybody. So I finish giving you a challenge. Cities cannot be resource efficient alone. They need you and they need me. If you help us create protected urban planet, we can help cities which uh, be become resource efficient together and faster. Thank you.